Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and today I am bringing you a special, special interview. Uh, before we talk about the interview is going to be about, I'd like my guest here to introduce himself, so that way I don't screw it up. Uh, Ibrahim, why don't you introduce yourself and explain what you do in the industry? Hey everyone, um, my name is Ibrahim, as Mike said, and uh, I currently working on uh, a game called Overfall, just released on Steam. Uh, it's a uh, strategy RPG game with uh, rock-like mechanics, and I'm just hoping you guys uh, will enjoy it. And uh, I was I was working as the team lead of uh, on the project, and um, with uh, with eight people we made it in almost uh, one and a half year. And it was <laughs> that's pretty impressive, one and a half years. I didn't yeah. expect it to be so short a time with only a team of eight people. Uh, yeah, well, um, it was rough and we worked real hard uh, on that, uh, but it was fun as well and we did what we re really loved. Before that I was doing um, mobile and social games, it was really pain, uh, it was that fun. Uh, I was always feeling like um, I am just uh, making something not very good. You know, most, you know, most of the mobile games, they are like working on um, their mechanics, their system are working on the seven, seven deadly sins. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's more of a psychological game when it comes yeah. to mobile games. You want to figure out what people are going to pay for, what people will shell uh -huh. money out for, not so much about the game itself. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, right. So we started this one and um, I'm really relieved and uh, happy it is over. I mean, it's on. It's live right now. Um, so we will see how successful it's gonna be. But, um, I'm believing in Overfall. It's it's fun for me. I'm a gamer as well. So we will see. All right. Well, Overfall is the title that we're going to be talking about for the most part. But before then, you mentioned working on some mobile games. Have, uh, do you want to give a few uh, examples of some games you've worked on? Uh, have you worked on anything other than Overfall that isn't a mobile game, even if just maybe back in college or something like that? What are some other projects that you've worked on that have led you up to this point? Yeah, well, um, I don't believe um, most of the listeners um, know those games because they were uh, partly the games for uh, uh, our region in Turkey and uh, the Middle East region. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some kind of, you know, um, I worked on some strategy games and some farm games. Uh, and some board games, uh, those kind of stuff. They are all safe. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, good, yeah. All right, well, well then, then let's just leave that in the past and let's talk about the present because that's what's uh -huh. exciting. So um, you explained what Overfall was very briefly. It's a uh, tactical RPG. Uh, could you go into a little bit more detail about what makes Overfall kind of stand out in uh, the market right now? Yeah, sure. Um, good, good question. Well, um, we... Okay, let me let me tell you the uh, full story. Uh, sure. Well, we we were we were planning to do something like um, we started discussing uh, in choosing a genre for ourselves. Uh, we chose uh, we selected uh, 4x roguelike uh, or tycoon, and we discussed uh, on that for like more than a month, uh, I think. And then we said, uh, okay, I am. Um, Roguelike uh, should be our thing, um, yeah, because of several reasons. You know, roguelikes are fun. Uh, you're you're playing over and over again, uh, and uh, with permadeath, uh, you your your characters um, are at your hands. You're you're feeling that those moments and procedural generation as well. It's making. Um, is making your uh, playthroughs uh, more fun, and um, those kind of um, positive uh, positive sides uh, made us choose roguelike over those two others. And then we got inspirations from uh, some games like uh, FTL and um, Divinity Original Sin, and. I can tell Warcraft, uh, Guild Force 2, King's Bounty as well. Uh, and then we mixed up uh, RPG and uh, turn-based strategy in a way uh, we like. So we decided to uh, create a world uh, with islands. 
so the main idea was uh, to sail around those islands uh, so you can wh whenever you land on an island you can encounter uh, a different story each time uh, and if your party uh, changes during because of rope like mechanics you die and change your party you can encounter the same story but this time uh, if your party is uh, with different heroes this time you can uh, have different choices uh, and we we created that now uh, in overfall you are sailing with your boat island to island to accomplish a, a main quest uh, and you are uh, every time you land on an island you encounter uh, a story while your characters are thinking you, you are selecting uh, their choices and then the story goes on and uh, the the battle uh, right now is uh, turn-based combat battle like uh, like every other one um, heroes of might and magic uh, divine intelligence and etc and uh, about that uh, turn-based combat we we tried we tried to make it simple to understand but uh, with a real um, with a real deep system uh, for me it, what we call is the condition system. Uh, you have to you have to manage your conditions uh, in the combat uh, dur uh, during the combat, uh, so you can uh, win the fight easily and then move on um, your sailings. Uh, you're you're gonna see when you play the game. You're gonna see the buffs and debuffs. Uh, you should manage them correctly and then combine them together or uh, take ad advantage of them so you will have more positive effects so that's mostly what overfall is i can mm, talk more and more but um you know that that we, that can be understood by uh playing it as well all right well it sounds like it's got a lot going on there's a lot mm -hmm. to kind of draw players and you mentioned briefly some of the inspiration such as divinity original sin uh, ftl mm -hmm. uh growing up did you play many tactical rpgs Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, I I played the Winter Agents in like more than 150 hours, I guess. I don't know. I should check Steam. You know, I I'm a gamer before uh, before being a designer. I I'm um, I'm happy with that and uh, I'm proud of that. I have I don't know like one 1,300 games on Steam, I guess, and I play every time. Like, like before the interview, I was playing game as well. Every day, uh, I love playing them. <clears throat> and tactical RPGs, this, yeah, um, I I enjoyed FTL very much before we are starting all fall, and uh, doing Torjulsi as well. Are there any the, older tactical RPGs that you played, like from over the years? Yeah. Um, I played a lot of King's Bounty. Uh, I played a lot of Age of Wonders. Uh, I played uh, Heroes of Might and Magic uh, as well. XCOM as well. Uh, I loved I loved XCOM one, two as well. Yeah, especially the new systems like uh, making your party more stealth. Uh, it was fun. And um, yeah, um, even Commandos. Um, I think it was it was lovely as well. Um, yeah, many more. Awesome. Just uh, just asking that just because I, I like to know exactly where people come from. It's always great to hear more about the history of what people have played because that kind of shapes us into gamers as we are now. So it's always good to hear the kind of game, especially XCOM. I'm glad that, mm -hmm. that, that you've played that because that is an all-time favorite, uh, especially mm -hmm. watching that on Twitch. So now that we've spoken a little bit about the history, about the inspirations of Overfall, why don't we talk a little bit about Overfall itself and some of those unique aspects we were talking about before. Now, before this interview, I made sure to get a bunch of facts about it, and I want to ask you about those uh, challenges that go into developing certain aspects of this incredibly large world that you've built. One of the most impressive things for me is it's a randomly generated world. It's not just the same game you play through it every single time. So are the elements of the story randomly generated as well, or is it just the areas that you can explore that are randomly generated? Um, well, 
the world you see, the ocean, the, the sea, and the islands, um, they are randomly generating. And uh, when, when you when you pop out the portal, uh, the system generates a world for you, and then um, it's completely. Actually, I cannot say random. There's a there's a procedural generation uh, behind the system. Uh, we we set some rules, and then they are uh, the system is just executing that those rules, and then creating the world for you. After that, when you land on an island, the system again checks some procedures, and uh, uh, you are again seeing uh, something different. But no, I I cannot tell. But actually, I can. I can say the stories are randomly generated in some points as well, but not all of them. Most of them are just uh, ha handwritten, uh, but uh, you can see the same story uh, differently each time. Like for example, <clears throat> uh, well, you can find some uh, elves asking you to help them on a mission. Like for example, uh, I remember one one of the stories. They were two elves were uh, looking for a mask, uh, and then you played that, enjoyed, and then you died. You, you now we are in a, a different uh, playthrough. You can see this time one of those elves, this time asking for help to find his uh, uh, her um, party member. You know her friend. Why? Because uh, this time uh, you are just entering the uh, that scenario in uh, in in a different timeline. Like, um, did you get it? You know, uh, they they are just yeah. Uh, it it uh, depends on the way that you play through the game, and it'll determine when you get to this specific story how your characters, the ones you actually have with you, the ones that are alive, are interacting with it. On top of just the time frame with which you entered the story. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, yeah, completely correct. Maybe the next time you can you can find the, the other elf this time surrounded with the undead as well. Uh, that happens, and um, I, I don't, I cannot say this one is random, but it, it's yeah, it's procedurally generated. It's a much better way of putting it. Yeah, procedurally generated is definitely the better way of putting it. Well, I mean, that's got to come with a lot of challenges to make it so it's so different every time you're playing through and you're seeing these stories unfold in different ways. What are some of the challenges that come in developing this kind of procedurally generated world? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, a lot of um, a lot of play playtests. I can tell. You know, you are just um, thinking of an idea to make something procedurally generated, but you don't know how. So you are you are prototyping things, and uh, that, and then playtesting it, and then iterating this process uh, over and over again until you really. Uh, you really like uh, what you have done, and uh, main challenges, I guess, uh, we had, we had, we made a lot of time um, just finding a, s a sweet point, uh, like um, making, uh, making it more fun. Like we gladly we worked. Uh, with Chris Avalon on, on a style guide, and he he really opened our minds uh, very broadly. He, he's a really great person, and uh, I really recommend uh, everyone who is interested in uh, writing uh, to just go and uh, check the Old Falls uh, writing guide. Uh, that style guide is uh, really great and explaining everything uh, what we what, what we've used on uh, overfall and uh, during the development of uh, the writing specific stuff. Awesome, awesome. So one of the big things about this procedurally generated world and the story that's unfolding is when you're on this large map in your ship and you see all these islands, there's a lot of other ships. You're not the only ship floating <laughs> around on this island. So. How do these ships kind of impact the way that the timeline of the game unfolds? I mean, is it if you see a ship land on an island and then you go, 
Is it going to be different than if that shipment never made it to that island in the first place? How does it impact this procedurally generated world? <laughs> yeah, that uh, that impacts uh, as well. Um, even you know they're fighting each other, um, and then they are just uh, the worm even just trying to destroy the the world as well. Uh, there's impacts. Uh, I in some in some playthroughs I I found um, some situations like um, okay I I just lost too easily this time. There's not not a big difference in uh, most of the playthroughs, but may there I, I can tell there's a. Uh, little chance of rng you can you know they can impact hugely but mostly in, in like more than 90 99 percent of the time uh, mostly the things are uh, going well uh, in the world but sometimes uh, they're impacting uh, very bad or very good for the uh, for the player but basically uh, what they do is uh, the ships they have behaviors and then they're choosing their behaviors uh, to do something like merchant bots they're just trying to uh, find find other ships to sell their stuff and uh, like El elven ships for example they're just trying to scout the area and uh, finding uh, other elves uh, who need help and then um, attacking their enemies, uh, which are the hollows. Um, yeah, that that's it. Well, it sounds like it's that's it. <laughs> no, that's it. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, I did, so it sounds like the game absolutely holds up the fact that the story it's it's never really the same two times through. I mean, that's been a recurring theme in pretty much all of your answers. How did the team go about even deciding that you guys were going to have all these variables that were just going to make it so different for every person that's doing it, even if they can recognize similar scenarios? Hmm. So can you say uh, that uh, sentence again? How did your team go about deciding that you wanted this many variables going into the story every single time you play through it? How many huh. different ways it can turn out? Uh, I think um, I'm, I'm remembering something uh, just at the discovery phase of Overfall. Um, we we were loving uh, we were loving to create characters on RPG games. I think most people like that, but um, you never enjoy those moments. Um, you know, when you start an RPG game, you just create your character and then play it and then that that playthrough goes like like dozens of hours so you, you you don't actually create the character again so we wanted to i think maybe the, right now what we are talking was the uh, birth of overfall birth reason of overfall character creation was really important so we may we we make that uh, like right now you know for you are enjoying the character creation uh, making your combo and then uh, starting your playthrough because of roguelike uh, you are dying uh, in one hour or two hours i don't i don't believe most people can <laughs> can live longer than two hours right now and then uh, you're again starting over and enjoying the character creation again and the variables and uh, different stories uh, yeah that's uh, again the because of the nature uh, of the game uh, i don't believe anyone even uh, in the world can can play the same playthrough uh, uh, again um, because it's almost impossible like there are like um, almost um, a thousand of uh, different short stories right now in game it's and it's constantly growing because of the story builder future now uh, the players are writing their stories as, as well uh, so it will grow uh, too uh, and uh, the good point is another thing I like um, for example I'm choosing fighter and cleric and uh, 
at the beginning of the uh, session, I'm saying, okay, this time I will go uh, with the wars. And uh, what what I sh should do now is uh, to go to volcanic islands. And then at the other playthrough, I can say, okay, now this time I will go with orcs. Now uh, that means I should go to barren islands. So th this changes everything uh, as well. So you actually hit on two really important points that I wanted to emphasize. Since you said it is a roguelike, I was going to ask about that character creator next. How important is it? How important is it to have a robust character creator so that it again really feels like it's different every time? Uh, again, I, I think unlocks are uh, a big part of uh, our character creation. You you should um, you should unlock stuff. You're just uh, starting with uh, two characters and without any uh, different weapons and utility skills. Just your fighter and cleric. But in world, you're just constantly unlocking a lot of stuff. Uh, and then when you start again, uh, now you are choosing uh, different uh, uh, different classes and different skills as well. What I like is we wanted to uh, we don't, we want to make uh, I mean make the feel, players uh, they feel like they're learning like uh, if I how how can I give an example okay I'm like fighter and cleric I'm starting it's very basic in all RPGs now uh, when I unlock uh, wizard this time I'm uh, going with wizard and cleric. Uh, at that playthrough, I'm learning uh, something uh, different in in both strategy-wise and tactics tactics-wise. Now I'm playing uh, the game in uh, in a ranged combat. Uh, that means I should I should choose hollows to attack because they are all melee, um, like, uh, and then I I should maybe grab uh, two other ranged uh, guys to my party uh, to keep the pace uh, of my um, you know ranged combat as well so it almost sounds like you can look forward to dying in the game because there's <laughs> always something new waiting for you when every time that you die yeah that's correct uh, that's really correct when, when you yeah you know I while I was watching people uh, play the game, I, I'm really surprising uh, in some ways. Like we even we got a lot of feedback uh, on that as well. Some people just playing the game; they are like chilling, you know. The, they they want to enjoy the stories. Uh, they are just um, trying to find out what's going to happen in the next island. But some of them are just um, wanting to kill uh, those uh, bad guys they find in the islands, which which means they they only want to enjoy the part of uh, tactical turn-based combat. And uh, I see some of them are just are after uh, <clears throat> after the unlocks. They're just trying to you know. Uh, make that uh, achievement of unlocking everything <clears throat> so these three are completely different uh, needs to me that that was you know that was really interesting for me uh, to see that and that was really hard to satisfy all these groups now if someone did want to do all the unlocks how what kind of what kind of time investment are we talking about here? Because it sounds like there's a lot to unlock. Um, there's like three. Um, there's like three guys. I think uh, honestly, I didn't make it. <laughs> I couldn't make it in Overfall. I couldn't uh, unlock everything in my uh, in my Steam account. But uh, we had uh, three guys. It, uh, I think more than. Um, Almost 200 hours, we are talking. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's a lot to look forward to. 
All right. And uh, another thing that you brought up earlier after alongside the character creator was these stories that are actually being made by the people playing the game. So mm -hmm. for those, are those making it into other people's procedurally generated worlds? Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, the system actually works like it, it, this. Um, the creator opens the uh, opens the game, and there is a button called the story builder. It's really accessible. Uh, it's very easy. If if you are into writing, uh, the tool is uh, too easy to learn. And then you are writing your story, uh, like you, for example, you are writing, I don't know, ten uh, short stories, and making uh, a story pack called let's say michael's stories and you are just publishing it uh, to the steam workshops uh, now uh, i'm just uh, entering the workshop for overfall and then clicking that story uh, and then subscribing it and then the that time uh, the next time i play the game uh, the next time i play the game i may encounter your stories uh, while landing to islands that's really impressive. That's a lot of additional content that is being put out by the people that are passionate about your game. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've covered a lot of major points about Overfall. I think that uh, the information you've given us has really shown why it's going to shine uh, over on Steam. So why don't we take some time to talk about uh, Overfall itself. You know, you said it took a year and a half to develop. I want to know how it's doing right now. Uh, is it available? How much of it's available? Is it fully released? Is it about to fully release? What are what are we talking about here with Overfall? Give us give us a time frame. Um, it's fully released not right now. We just got uh, out of our access like uh, two days ago. Uh, it's um, all the features completed. Uh, we were in our access for uh, to finish uh, the story builder and uh, thanks to our community we made a. Uh, really good um, enhancements in, in the game and balancing as well. Uh, now uh, we will focus on, uh, you know, adding more stories and, uh, you know, uh, we don't have uh, much bugs right now, but, you know, we are discovering this stuff time to time and we will try to make the game um, better uh, with new updates uh, and then uh, most probably if if the sales will go good, uh, we plan to make a, a couple of DLCs as well for the game. But we will see. In two days, uh, I can say uh, the game is going good. Um, reviews are, uh, you know, making us real happy. We have, uh, we have more than 93% uh, uh, positive reviews right now uh, on Steam. And uh, for the media, uh, we have um, 8 uh, out of 10. Uh, that's very good as well. Well, we are satisfied. We are happy. Uh, we are hardworking still. And uh, hope it will be better. And hope uh, we can make uh, mm, more games uh, like Overfall and even better games. That's it. Well, it sounds like it's off to a great start. So uh, it was available in early access. What kind of price point are we talking about for hundreds of hours of gameplay? Uh, right now, it's $14.99 in uh, Steam. Uh, we have a 10% discount for <laughs> for five more, more days. Uh, yeah. So you heard the man, everyone. Go check out Overfall because you can save, what is that, $1.50 off of the already very cheap. I'd say that's that's cheap for... for <laughs> as many hours as it is i mean that's that's impressive that you guys got it to a price point like that that shows how yeah. much you guys care about the game just getting to as many hands as possible yeah uh, we even uh, the game even was uh, 9.99 in early access but we got too many uh, feedback on uh, you know um, raising the price <laughs> everyone even that's the rare buyer, yeah even the buyers told us you know uh, like guys the this game's uh, more should be more expensive than this so we for the main release uh, we made it uh, 14.99 um, yeah it's when i see the similar games um, it is a, a little uh, bit cheap that's correct um, but um, 
we are not we are not sad with that you know uh, it's fine it's good it, this is a business of course uh, we should make money but uh, this is our first game on steam and we are still uh, learning these stuff and we are uh, trying to uh, make better games so i i think we don't have to you know um, just focus on um, the business side of things uh, we are doing it uh, for fun as well and uh, i hope uh, i hope think uh, more and more in the future well i got to say i'm looking forward to hopping into my adventure after this interview because <laughs> i myself am going to be picking up overfall very shortly uh, and I look forward to however many hours I manage to get out of it. Ibrahim, thank you for joining me today on this interview. Uh, is there anything that you want to say before we wrap things up here? Um, well, um, I'm th I, I thank you uh, for having me here, uh, Michael. Uh, and I hope uh, you will have fun uh, on, your, uh, on your journeys, on your sailings. And then uh, happy dying. <laughs> happy dying. Great. <laughs> I'm glad that you're looking forward to hear how I experienced my first death. Sorry. <laughs> uh, is there anything you'd like to say to those uh, listening about uh, Overfall or any last words for them? Um, yeah, um, I hope everyone uh, will enjoy the game. And uh, guys, we really, 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 really love to see uh, your feedback. Uh, our current community uh, was the best thing ever happened uh, to me in my life. Uh, they were great. Uh, they helped us a lot. So please um, don't go silent. It's uh, it's really fun on Steam's comment hubs. So come and share your thoughts about the game. So um, you know we can do uh, our best uh, to make it better. And uh, you know you will help us by doing that. You will help us to learn new things. So. Uh, not only for overfall, um, we can make better things uh, in the next ones. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us today, Ibrahim. Uh, everyone, thank you for listening. If you uh, want to check out Overfall, check the description of the video below. I'll include a link to its Steam page so you can purchase it yourself. Remember, five more days from when this interview takes place, which is on Thursday, May 19th. So you guys have five more days from now to get it for 10% off. Uh, definitely let me know what you think about it. Be sure to comment on the Steam page, comment under the video, wherever. Just make sure to be leaving feedback somewhere. Uh, thank you again for joining us on this video. I'll see you next time, and until then, take care.